All right, it's time for another math easy solution. Term to discuss approximate integration and looked at the left, right, midpoint, and trapezoid rules. Basically, there are two situations in which it is impossible to find the exact value of a definite integral. Situation one is basically uh, sometimes it's very difficult or even impossible to find an antiderivative for some functions. For example, uh, it's impossible to evaluate the following integrals of these functions. Uh, this one, zero, for integral from zero to one of e to the x squared, or this one uh, from negative one to one of square root one plus x cubed. And you can learn more about whether you can integrate all functions or not in my earlier video in the video uh, description below. And also situation two is basically when the function is determined from a scientific experiment through instrument readings or collected data, and there may be no formula for the function at all. So if you just have a bunch of data, no formula, you're gonna have to approximate it uh, one way or the other. And I'll go over an example on this in a later video. And in, uh, also in both cases, we need to find approximate values of definite integrals. And, but we already know one such method, and that's basically when we look back to the definition of an integral, um, it's simply a limit of Raymond sums, but sums up to infinity. So now uh, recall that the definite integral is defined as a limit of Raymond sum, so any Raymond sum could be used as an approximation to the integrals. And also make sure to watch my earlier video on Raymond sums in the video description below to learn more about that. So basically, if we divide from A to B into n subintervals of equal length, uh, and I'll go, I'll graph this out soon, better illustrated, what we get is an equal length of let's say delta x equals to the difference here. That's the distance from A to B divided by n. So we'd average it out to be the same. Then basically, what we have is the integral from A to B of f of x dx is roughly equal to. Yeah, roughly equal to the Raymond sum from i equals to 1 up to n of f of, well, x i, and then put a star above this, and I'll explain that in a bit. Yeah, and basically where x i star is just any point in the i interval of x i um, minus 1 to x i. So what this means is if we were to graph it, Let's graph a example. I'll explain what that means. Let's say you have a function like this. This is our f of x. And this is up to a. And this is our interval b. So now let's say we break it up into, well, uh, n uh, sub intervals. So let's, uh, n of equal distance. So we could do something like this. So every single one of these has a distance delta x. And these are all up to, let's say, 1, 2, set all the way up to n. So you have n intervals equal length, that's that's where we got our uh, delta x equals to b minus a over n. So we just take the distance, divide by n to get an average length in between. So now what we're doing is, this is any point inside the interval. For example, and, and again, these are just rectangles. So let's look at this one right here. Let's just take an interval, a random one from here and cut it across to here. In this example right here, this is where our xi lands on, our xi star. So this is our xi, um, xi star, and it's in between the xi, and here is xi minus one. So that's the sub-interval from xi negative one to xi. Now if we look at, let's say we draw a rectangle like this, in this case, to sum it up, in this case, our xi star is exactly xi minus 1. That's over there. And here, we'll just draw another one here. That's where our xi star is. It's just anything in between. In this case here, if we do something like that, that's on the right end point. So wherever this fx crosses, that's where our, F, our xi star is. And last one, let's just choose something like this, so that this is our new xi star. As you can see, it could be anywhere in between. It could be the left endpoint, the right endpoint, etc. So now, if we choose, let's say, the xi star to be the left endpoint of the interval, and this is to make calculations easier, so you force it to be just one uh, one rule by the left-hand side in this case. So what we get now is our 
x i star is equal to x i minus one. So in this case, we're choosing everything to be the left end point. So every single one will make sure that it's over here. So for example, over here would be actually this rectangle as opposed to this right side. So we're picking, forcing it to the left side. So what this means is the integral from a to b of f of x dx is roughly equal to, we'll call this ln for the left side, equals to now the Raymond sum i equals 1 of n f of now x i minus 1 of delta x right there. So now if you were to graph this out, what we get is something like this, y. So there's our function. And now if we were to break this up into n intervals, something like this, up to, let's make it a bit bigger. So something like that, as you can see, now we always pick the left hand side. So that's the x i minus one side of every single interval. So there's our approximation. So as you can see, it's something like this. But as you can see, there's some errors. This case is too much. And here there's empty space. So this is not that good of an approximation. And also it's worth noting that if f of x is greater than zero, so in this case we have, well, f of x is greater than or equal to zero. In this case, it's above the x-axis. Then the integral basically represents the area and the left-hand approximation, in our case, represents an approximation of the area by the rectangles shown. So this is an approximation of the area using this left-hand side of underneath this uh, graph because it's always positive in this case. But now if we choose xi star to be the right end point, what we get is similarly xi star equals 2xi now. So now the function or the integral a, a to, from a to b of fx dx is roughly equal to, we'll call this rn. And now it's a summation of like this up to n i equals 1 of f of x, actually this is f of x i now, and then delta x. So that's what we have right there. And then if we were to graph this out, it's similar to the previous one. And now again, if break it up into, yeah, into even sub intervals, so we'll go something like this. up to like that. So now for every sub interval, we always pick the right side of it. Oops, this is not a rectangle, okay. Something like that. And this is, it's always the right side or the x i side of this interval right here. So this every single is an interval right here. Now that we always pick the right side for our f of x right there. And again, we get something like that and again we get something like that. And, and once again, in this case, we have errors again, but it's just uh, opposite side of the left-hand side. So this, so this one's too little here, this one's too much there. Now the approximations LN and RN, well, as you can see, they could be improved upon, and they're, they're, initial, they're called basically left endpoint approximation and right endpoint approximation, respectively. But they could be improved upon, and a better approximation is called the midpoint rule and it's basically when we choose the x i star to be the midpoint of the subinterval x i minus 1 to x i. So for so what this means is x i star now we're forcing it to be well we'll call this x i with a uh, line on top for x i midpoint and this is just if you recall this is just midpoint is similarly how we got delta x is just the average of these two. So this equals xi minus 1 uh, plus xi and then divide by 2. You have to basically get the average of it. Yeah, and then uh, what we get right here now is the integral from a to b of f of x dx now is roughly equal to, we'll call this mn, and this equals 2, the summation like this, n i equals 1 of f of x i with the line on top for midpoint, delta x. And again, if you were to write this out, this equals 2 
summation n i equals one of yeah of f of now we could write this whole thing out x minus one plus x i uh, divided by two delta x. So at each interval we'll be taking an average. For example, let's graph this out now x y and then look something like this. So now let's break this up into n intervals, sub intervals like this of even lengths. So what we get now is we take the midpoint of it. So if this is the midpoint right here, we go all the way up to this side and then bring it down. And then similarly, we go all the way up to here. And draw this out. We get something like that. And again, cut it into this part right here. As you can see, the approximation, it looks better now. So now this port part right here. And then the last one, something like this right here. So now this is an interesting one because it, it looks like there's an error, let's say, for example, here. But, but as you can see, it, it makes up for it by having too much here. So this is actually a pretty good approximation. Whenever there's an empty space here, it makes up by having an extra space there. So it's in fact really, um, this is more, uh, more accurate than the other two. Now uh, another approximation, it's called the trapezoidal rule. And this results from averaging the approximations L, N, and R, N. So what we get in this case, what I mean by that is, if we go from A to B of F of X, DX, and we call this roughly equal to T of N, now this equals two, let's say if we're taking an average, average of, of well, of one over two uh, times it by LN plus RN right here. And then if you simplify this out, or expand this actually, what we get now is summation, this is N uh, equals one of, of what we get now is F of X, uh, I minus one delta X and then plus the summation and I equals one of F of X I delta X now and now you could uh, simplify this even further by well making it to one summation take this delta X out because it's the same everywhere divide by two and now what we could write is the summation and i equals one and then add these together using basic uh, summation properties so what we get here i minus one plus f of x i bracket like that so that's our answer and also it's interesting to know when you add these up you're gonna have well the you're gonna have a couple terms always appear the same time for example if you write delta x by two and now let's plug in i equals one in here we'll have a x one and an x zero so x zero plus here we'll have f x one and now when we plug in i equals two what we get is put these in a separate bracket like this what we get now is is when it's two we get a two and a one so we'll have it as f of x1 plus f of x2. And then we keep doing this. Yeah, we keep doing this until we get to the last one, which is when uh, when this equals to n, i equals n, we get now f of x n minus one, and then plus f of x n. And now, as you can see, there's always this always adds up twice. There's an x1, there's, there's two of them, but there's only one of the x0 and xn. And the one before had an x minus one as well. So this equals two delta x over two. And then we have to uh, put this in like this. This is gonna be f of x0 plus two f of x1 plus uh, two f of x2 plus keep going on and on until we get over here. I don't know why my tablets keep moving to the left. So what we get now is 
uh, 2 f of x n minus 1 and then plus f of x n. And as you see, yeah, that's what you could do there. And you can simplify this further by taking the 2 out of this inner function there, but I'll leave it as that. And now if you were to graph this out, what we get is something that looks like this. Y, and then looks like that. Now if we break this up into uh, n sub intervals, go from here to here, from here, and then the last one here. So if the way to do this is, let's say, look, let's look at the left side, because it's an average of the left and right side. So we look at the this side like this. This is the left end point like that. And now the right end point is, is we pick this side. So that's what the area is going to be like that all the way down. And then when you take an average, when you take an average of these two, the only thing different is this top part. So and then you know that the average of a rectangle is just you split it exactly in half like that. I'll draw it better. So you'll have it like that exactly like that. And this is going to be now our area. So every single one is going to have a trapezoid. And again, that this shape right here is, is a trapezoid. And that's where we get our name from. So basically any, any four-sided stuff like that is a trapezoid. And if it was all even, you'll have a square or a rectangle. But uh, anyway, so what we have now is, then if you look at this side up to this point, it's just, it's just connect the line from the two. And then from here to here, the line like that. And then from here to here, we have exactly a line like, like this. And there is our area. So this looks like it's really accurate. But it's uh, important to know that although the trapezoid appears to be the most accurate, it's actually not the most accurate. This one appears, well, it's, it's clearly more accurate than the left and the right, hand, right end approximations. But actually, in most cases, the midpoint rule is, is the most accurate. And I'll compare and explain why in the next video. But as you could see, well, in, in this case right here, there is a tiny bit of error right there, a tiny bit across. Yeah, so that's where the error is. But in this case, I'll, this has a, has a balancing act with the midpoint rule. So this is actually the most uh, approximate or accurate one as the midpoint one. And I'll explain in the later video when I go over an example. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you'll learn from this pretty extensive introduction to approximate integration. Like always, you could uh, download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.